you want to stand up and try a little bit exercises? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Arms up, yeah. Deep breath and hold and then deep out breath. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Mr. Chairman, dear Krista, ladies and gentlemen, quality assurance and quality improvement in healthcare are some of the great challenges in the future development of uh, healthcare systems nationally and internationally. Some days ago, a two day conference in Berlin, sponsored by the German Health Ministry, closed with a clear message quality and quality management is essential and crucial for maintaining functioning healthcare systems. Uh, and that's not only in regard to money, it's mainly in regard to uh, healthcare outcome. And what's hidden in this discussion in this day is the outcome. We want to get a good, a ideal quality outcome. If the results, if the results of a sound investigation draw doubt on the quality of important diagnostic procedures, lay press media are alarmed. You can see it here. The New York Times titled in this issue on December the 14th last year with this headline. And uh, the background of this headline lies in the paper of Barclay et al. published in the December issue, the same date as this issue of New York Times comes out of the New England Journal. And this paper showed a linear correlation, which you can see here on this graph, a linear correlation between the length of withdrawal time of the colonoscope and the amount of colonic adenomas detected. Further issues of concern are missed carcinomas after, after recent colonoscopy, the so-called interval carcinomas. You have seen some data from other registers here. And um, you see, if you can see it, there are some risk factors which are important for effectiveness study because it's important where the colonoscopy has done, in hospital or in office, or by whom it has been done, by a trained gastrologist or by an internal or family doctor. And uh, these data is coming up that uh, up to 6%, up to 6% of interval carcinomas are detected after an uh, uneventful colonoscopy. It is therefore reasonable to call to action in order to measure and maintain a high performance quality of colonoscopies and colonoscopists. And uh, I agree this title of David Lieberman, and he's one of our foremost and utmost quality manager in colonoscopy. The more a medical procedure is regarded as a gold standard, the more it is subject to quality assurance programs necessarily. Colonoscopy is regarded as a gold standard, some discussion we have here, in the prevention of colorectal cancer because there is some evidence that colonoscopy in combination with polypectomy is the most effective procedure in lowering CRC mortality and incidence. Nevertheless, this should be accomplished with a high detection rate of precancerous lesions and early stages of CRC in combination with the provision of a high safety and high comfort standard, which refers to the comfort of the patients. Quality assurance of colonoscopy is aiming to avoid some drawbacks which may jeopardize the success of prevention by colonoscopy, and some of these drawbacks are an inappropriate use of colonoscopy, and this means it had to be a better knowledge about the right and the proper indications, unacceptable long waiting times, information which is not suitable for non-medical populations, 
an uncomfortable, uncomfortable colon cleansing proce procedure, a restriction of sedation management to improper and cheaper substances like midazolam. Investigations on the performance of endoscopists showed a widespread range of variations. Quality assurance should be addressed to decrease the variations of the performance of endoscopists as well. Some of the possible variations are shown, and you can see it here. In order to limit the variation to an acceptable amount, quality assurance should be focused to this area of performance as you can see it here. I like to draw your attention to a problem which was addressed here in this conference, which could be a limiting factor for the propagation of a screening colonoscopy, colonoscopy program in some nations, like in UK perhaps, or perhaps sometimes in Germany, if uh, our younger people don't want to get their license for gastroenterology. If the acceptance rate of screening colonoscopy is reaching the desired level of, let me say, 40 to 50 percent, as we have discussed earlier, there may be a li limited manpower supply. You can see here the yellow line, the dotted line. This is, these are data from the US, the estimated capacity of the providers in the US. And as we know, this problem is partially addressed in the UK by introducing the nurse endoscopists uh, successfully. And there are data that uh, nurse endoscopies are performing endoscopy as well as gastroenterologists. Perhaps this may be a solution for the problem in other countries in the near future too. Let me make a view in an intermediate future. We maybe have centers, colon centers, and you go on in the first room, we have a self-propelling coloscope room. In the next room, you will get the pill cam. On the next room, you have an, uh, an MRI or a CT scan for virtual colonoscopy. And then you have an endoscopy unit, and there's an optical colonoscopy, screening colonoscopy performed, and the interventional colonoscopy are performed. And on the end of the floor, there's the operation theater where the surgeon, but not the surgeons, are performing the robots, are performing laparoscopic collect colectomy. And in the center, you have a room like the control room of TV stations where monitors are fixed on the walls and the doctors are sitting for the monitors and controlling the procedures. Perhaps other people are doing the investigations, the procedures like te technicians, nurses, and the doctors are sitting and they are engaged in making diagnosis and decisions about um, the further procedures. This may be, that uh, will be. Uh, recently in uh, GI endoscopy published report on minor complications after screening colonoscopy within 30 days showed that minor complications like bloating and pain after the procedures happened in more than 30% of the cases. Interestingly, but not surprisingly, the preparation procedure for colonoscopy was rated the most difficult in 77%. Work loss of two days of urine was found in 94%. This investigation shows, shows that minor complications are far more important numerically than major complications like perforation and bleeding. As a, competent, as a consequence of the many possible drawbacks of a good quality of colonoscopy, I want to propose a list of performance measures, as you can see here, which has partially been published by the American Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy recently last year. It has been shown that the documentation of performance measures alone is already able to increase the performance quality. These performance measures are not only structure measures, 
Moreover, they include some important outcome measures as well, like the detection rate of adenoma, early stages of colorectal carcinoma, and individual endoscopist complication rates as well. I think that's important to have a profiling. We know it from the cardiologist in America and the surgeon, the cardiologist surgeon. These are quality profiling methods. As a quality manager, I want to point out that quality assurance is only a part of a quality, total quality management in healthcare. Therefore, it's unequivocal to build a quality management for gastrointestinal endoscopy units, including the performance measurement of screening colonoscopy in addition to infection control, data management, and continuous quality improvement. The German model of preventing for, uh, for colorectal cancer by screening colonoscopies includes a quality assurance program by licensure of the providers and a quality control of infection control and the obligation to perform a minimum number of procedures, 200 total colonoscopies and 10 polypectomies annually. Professor Schmiegel has mentioned this earlier. If these performance criteria are fail failed, a shortage of reimbursement follows. The performance data of the recent evaluation of the German program showed a high completion rate of the procedure, a nearly 100% photo documentation of the completeness of the coloscopy, a nearly 70% of early stages of CRC, as you can see it here, UICC stage one and two, and a low major complication rate below 1% perforation rate in 0.03%. In November 2006, the NY Citywide Colon Cancer Coalition has proposed a benchmarking for screening colonoscopy. You have seen the title of this uh, pub publication from Dr. Giebis. And I want to advise the representatives of the national healthcare systems in Europe to try to adopt these benchmarks. You can see it in detail on the printouts. This process has started partially in Germany by the introduction of colon cancer centers sponsored by the German Cancer Society and brought forward by Professor Schmiegel extensively. To conclude, I want to point out that colonoscopy can only remain our gold standard for CRC screening if a functioning quality assurance is established Performance measures are developed and implemented uh, in the routine practice and the continuous benchmarking is evaluated nationally and perhaps internationally. It is essential to guarantee a su sufficient number of well-trained endoscopists for an achievement of a timely access to a screening colonoscopy performed in a high quality standard. And let us not forget for the evaluation of cost effectiveness. Finally, I want to show you one of the most beautiful buildings of Munich, where I'm coming from, which is the entrance to the classicistic avenue of King Ludwig I as a contribution to our hosts, the European delegates of Bavaria. Thank you for your attention.